All right, so the first thing I do on this one is I try to find the period. I think it's easiest to use the asymptotes, right? Because if you subtract uh, two of your asymptotes, the ones next to each other, that will give you your period. So this asymptote is at pi over four, and this asymptote is at three pi over four. So my period is gonna be three pi over four minus pi over four, which is two pi over four reduced, gives me pi over two. So now using that, I can find letter B, which is pi over the period. Remember with tangent, it's just gonna be pi, not two pi. Divided by pi over two, which is pi over one, divided by pi over two, which is the same as pi over one times two over pi. The pi's cross out and you're left with just two. So write down your function a times the tangent of that letter b times x. Now, the way to finish this is we need to find an ordered pair. And this problem does a poor job of doing that. So I'm going to give you that point. And if I asked you to do this on a quiz or a test or anything, I would give you a point or make it obvious what the point is. And the point is right here. The point is actually do it over here, pi over 8, comma 4. All right, you might be thinking, where did you get that from? Don't worry about where I got it. Just know that I'll either give it to you like this or it'll make, be very clear on the graph, the sketch, what it is. So plug in for the y value, which is f of x, plug in that 4. Then I'm going to do 2 times and plug in that pi over 8. So I keep doing my algebra here. All right, this is the tangent of 2 pi over 8, which is really pi over 4. You should know the tangent of pi over 4. That's just 1. So when I do that math, I get a equals 4. All right, so that's not the answer. To write down the answer, we copy this one down, but I replace A with 4, something that we did even with algebra last semester. So 4 times the tangent of 2 times x, and that is our answer. All right, that wraps up tangent. Let's move into the reciprocals. So we're going to do secant, then cosecant, and then we'll finish with cotangent. Like I said, I just want to show you the parent function for all three of these. And then uh, we're not going to do any transformations. We'll leave that to the sine and cosine mostly, and maybe uh, some tangent. Okay, so secant is the reciprocal of cosine. Remember, um, as you're practicing this, always think about what we did in the first unit, right? S, C, C, S. So if you're talking about secant, then you're thinking about the uh, regular one being C. So for cosine, so secant and cosine are reciprocals. So I wrote down uh, all of the cosines, and we're going to do one over those numbers. So 1 over 1 is just 1. The secant of pi over 6 is going to be 1 over, so 1 over the square root of 3 over 2, which is actually going to make it 2 over the square root of 3. I can't leave it like that. I'm going to multiply by the square root of 3 over the square root of 3. And when I do that, I get 2 times the square root of 3 over 3. When I flip the square root of 2 over 2, same idea. It becomes 2 over the square root of 2, you can't leave it like that. So when you multiply by that same radical, you get 2 times the square root of 2 over 2. The 2's cross out, and you just get the square root of 2. Flipping 1 half is a little simpler. That's going to be 2 over 1. 1 over 0 is actually undefined. So look at that. We still have uh, asymptotes, right, just like tangent. Flipping this one gives me negative 2. Keeping uh, the same idea of a negative square root of 2. This one's going to be negative 2 times the square root of 3 over 3. And then flipping this one, you get negative 1. All right, so let's do that. Let's find our parent function here. I'm going to sketch the asymptote, which was pi over 2 first. All right. Let's put on the points. The secant of 0 is 1. Secant of 0 is 1. The secant of pi over 4 is the square root of 2. So square root of 2 is approximately 1.4, so just shy of 1.5. All right. Um, what you're going to notice here for um, the asymptotes is that every time you have an iteration right, of adding another uh, pi, you're going to get another asymptote. So I'm going to have the same idea like with tangent. But I don't want you to become, cl become complacent here. It doesn't mean that you're going to have the same period. You'll see in a moment why the period is actually 2 pi again, uh, unlike tangent, which is pi. So negative pi over 4 is going to be positive square root of 2. So let me kind of make one of the curves for you so you can see it. So there's one. There's another. 
All right, so there's one of the curves. Now watch this. When you move to the right of this one, you have the tangent of, let's see, 3 pi over 4, which is negative square root of 2. So negative 1.4 approximately. This one is going to be negative 1. And so watch what happens when you do tangent of 5 pi over 4. You get a similar curve, but it's actually opening down. Okay, so that's how it's going to move to the left and to the right forever. So this one over here is going to be the one that opens down. And here in a moment, I'll sketch it on Desmos so you can see that it goes on forever. All right, so that's what the graph of secant looks like. So it does have asymptotes like tangent, but unlike tangent, it's not going to be a curve that kind of looks like an odd polynomial, like x cubed, where you kind of have like an s. These look more like parabolas. So let's graph secant, let's delete all this, and just type in secant. Let me make this back to pi over 4 and zoom out a little bit. All right, so you can kind of see uh, we created, let me zoom in, we created these first two here, right, on the right, and then this other one on the left. But if I kept zooming out, you would continue to see it goes on forever with asymptotes as well. So that's the secant function. Okay, let's move into, oh, one more thing I want to say. Remember, the period for this is 2 pi radians, all right? It takes 2 pi radians to do uh, two of these, right? Because you have one opening up, one opening down. So don't get confused. The period is not pi. It actually is 2 pi because we need to draw two uh, full ones to get a full period. Okay, let's do cosecant. All right, so cosecant is going to be 1 over the sine of x, right? These are reciprocals. So 1 over 0 is going to be undefined. So actually, the very first thing is an asymptote. 1 over 1 half is 2. We did some work with 1 over the square root of 2 over 2 to just get the square root of 2. Then we have 1 over uh, this radical over 2. So if I flip it, I get 2 times the square root of 3 over 2. I'm sorry, over 3. There we go. 1 over 1 is 1. This is going to be 2 times the square root of 3 over 3. This one, just the square root of 2, then 2, and then 1 over 0 is undefined again. All right, so you're going to see it looks very similar, just in different spots. Let's do those asymptotes first. So the y-axis is an asymptote. Pi is an asymptote. 2 pi is an asymptote. Negative pi is an asymptote, and negative 2 pi is an asymptote. Plotting my points, I get pi over 4 is the square root of 2. So pi over 4 is going to be about approximately 1.4. Pi over 2 is 1. And as I move over to 3 pi over 4, it's the same thing. So it has this the same feel as those um, same parabola-looking curves with secant. Cosecant has very similar ones. They're the same, but just in different location. All right, so same thing here. I'm going to have the negative version of this, so opening down. All right, so there's that one. And let's do, we can do uh, two more moving to the left. This one's also going to open down. And then this last one here on the left will open uh, to the right. I don't know why I said to the right. <laughs> Open up. All right. So let me go into Desmos and show you what happens when you type in uh, the cosecant of x. Again, it's almost like identical. I'll leave secant on there for a second so you can see how they're very, very similar. So let's leave secant. Let me zoom in just a little bit. Okay. So this is cosecant. All right, so you can see they look almost identical. It's just like kind of shifted a little bit. So let's take that off. And now you can see uh, the same thing. I'll zoom in one more time. So you can see the ones that we did, all right, and have those asymptotes at the x equals 0 and then every uh, instance of adding or subtracting pi. So again, almost identical to secant, just shifted a little bit to the left or to the right. All right, again, period for this is going to be 2 pi radians like for secant. Let's do cotangent, our very last one. And then we'll be finished. All right, so cotangent. All right, cotangent 
is a reciprocal. It's the reciprocal of tangent. And we know that tangent is sine of x over cosine of x. So I really want to be thinking here that cotangent of x is going to be cosine of x over the sine of x. All right, so that's why you see uh, cosine and sine again. So we have 1 over 0, which is undefined for this first one. And then I have the square root of 3 over 2 divided by 1 half. Let's flip it. So times... 2 over 1. So the 2's will cross out and leave me with just the square root of 3. This one is going to be just 1. This one is flipped, but the other way. So this is going to be the square root of 3 over 3, like we had with tangent earlier. The cosine, or excuse me, the cotangent of 0 is going to be 0 over 1, which is 0. This one is going to be negative square root of 3 over 3. This one is negative 1. And then I have negative square root of 3. And finally, negative 1 over 0 is undefined. So again, we've got asymptotes, all right, like we had before. Let's put those asymptotes on here. So the asymptotes are going to be at x equals 0. And x equals uh, pi. Yep, pi. And just every time you add or subtract pi, you've got another asymptote. All right, so let's plot the points now. I've got 0, which was an asymptote. Then I've got pi over uh, 2. I'll do pi over 4, actually. Pi over 4 is 1. So down here. Pi over 2 is 0. And then 3 pi over 4 is negative 1. So it looks like this. All right, which looks similar to what we had with tangent, but you'll notice it's opening a different direction, right? With tangent, we go from bottom left to top right. I'll go to the very top again if you need it, right? Bottom left to top right when you're doing tangent. You'll notice with cotangent, it's top left to bottom right. So again, that shouldn't really surprise you since this is the reciprocal, but it looks the same when you do all of these. So I'll make a couple more, even though you don't really have to. And as I'm finishing it, you'll notice that we're back to, for cotangent, we're back to the period being pi radians. So secant and cosecant, for a moment, we were back to the period being two pi radians. But now with cotangent, we're back to just pi radians. So cut it in half. All right, our last one. All right, and that's it. Again, I'm not going to do any transformations of this, but I just want to show you what all of these, um, let me do it in decimals real quick, what all of the, Reciprocal functions looked like secant, cosecant, and then finally with cotangent. All right, so the last one here, and I'll put tangent up so you can see it first. So here's tangent. We already did this one. And then here's cotangent. All right, so you can see how it almost is a uh, reflection about uh, the purple and the black. All right, so that's it for graphing um, these other trig functions. Again, I want to reiterate, uh, don't get overwhelmed. I'm really just going to focus on sine and cosine. I might throw in tangent every once in a while, but it's going to be sine and cosine. That's the most important thing. So make sure you're brushing up on this 6.1 lesson. This is just uh, introducing you to the other ones. All right. Good luck.